Beer done, the beer deal finally done after weeks of going back and forth. SAB Miller agreeing to be acquired by AB InVev for more than $104 billion. Now, the price tag is close to previous offers, but other perks were added to this deal, including the possibility of a dividend payout. If approved, this will be one of the largest deals this year, and it would bring some of the world's most popular beers under one roof. It comes just one day after Dell announced its acquisition of EMC. That was for $67 billion. My next guest says we will see more deals going forward. Joining us right now is Stephen Offey, as Federated Investors, Chief Equity Strategist. And Stephen, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. Why more deals, do you think? We've already, last year, I think, was a record year. We were, this year is turning out to be a record year as well. Why? Prices are lower. And low interest rates. Yeah. And, um, and, and people know they're going to they're go higher next year. So now's the time to do deals. And particularly in the healthcare space, Maria, that's where we're expecting to see some activity. We, you need price discovery right now in that biotech area. And we think it's gonna come from the majors uh, looking for, for additional deals for their pipeline. Impact on markets? That's very positive. Why? We, we expect the biotechs to, to resume leadership here over the next few months. Uh, they've been really pounded, as you know, down, I think, at 1.25% off their highs. Yeah, so but, but let's not forget they went all the way up, right, for, for a long time. So. But the fundamentals are very good there. What does I this can, tell I us can, about... I can actually just really quickly tie it to the Democratic presidential debate, because one hot issue will be drug pricing in this country. Yeah. So if you're going to do a deal and you think that these stocks will be under pressure as you get into the presidential season, why not wait? I think sometimes you get a correction looking for an explanation. The biotechs, as you said, Maria, they needed a correction. They had gone nothing right. but up. Everybody owned them. They were very over-owned. The idea that Hillary Clinton caused this correction, I think, is really, I just think it's wrong. I, what I think the, what you can't, you can't blame well on that because they were up so much. Right. And, and, you know, whether she's president or not, whether she controls Congress or not, these are big questions. I think most people in the market would not be willing to put a lot of weight on. What do these deals tell us about where we are in, in the cycle? Don't we tend to see a lot of big deals happening late in the cycle? So is this a signal of that? I love the late in the cycle comment because we've been hearing that for several years. Right? You know, we I really have. have. You're yeah. right. That's the wall of worry. Yeah. So, so where, where are we in the cycle and what do the deals tell us? We about think that? we're in a long range move up towards 2,500 on the S&P. We'd say we're probably halfway, maybe, maybe two thirds of the way through the cycle. So we're going to see more and bigger deals. Yeah. And well, we don't think it's just driven by deals. But I think right in here with this big correction, you need real money to move into the market to, to kind of set prices in especially areas where there's a lot of debate around what, what things are worth. So is the big selling, do you think, at this point done with? I mean, we, we had a very tough third quarter in terms of market activity. Do you think we've seen the worst? We, we want to see how the market reacts this week to earnings. I, I think and the, to the, the IPOs. This is what I mentioned earlier. If we, we get a good reception from first data, it's 160 million shares they're selling. Yeah. And, and I think the IPO is, is important, Maria, but the, 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 the earnings on the banks, because the bank earnings have been taken way down, the stocks are off, they should, they should do, do better next year. And how the market plays off of these is what we're watching. Our expectation is you're not going to see a lot of movement in these stocks, despite pretty punk earnings. I Everybody mean, took their numbers tonight. down on the bank earnings. They're already taken down. I think expectations are set relatively low. You talk about real money setting prices. There's, there's a, there are a lot of people out there who say that stock prices are overvalued, that they have been for a while. They look at the Schiller uh, P.E. ratios. Yeah. Are you saying that, that corporate America is looking at prices and saying they're actually undervalued right oh, now? Oh, yeah. If you look at price to cash flows, or you like, we, we say the market's trading at 15 times next year earnings. The Schiller ratio is, is single-handedly, it costs people a lot of money. It's a, you look back 10 years, we've come through a bear market right. that lasted 15 years with two giant recessions. Of course, the denominator is right. depressed. So the Schiller ratio is going to look like stocks are overvalued until they're actually nearing their peaks in this cycle. So right. what, in, in terms of the earnings, you now yesterday Goldman was upgraded. You like Goldman Sachs and you like J.P. Morgan. We do. Yeah, Goldman. You would buy these stocks before they report earnings this week? We own them already and we're looking to add. We want to see how they react to these earnings, but our expectation is they're, they're going to hang in there pretty well this week. The, the worry is on revenue. Yeah. What about other upside surprises in terms of sectors like the energy? I mean, that, that of course, that's going to be the worst performing, but also basic materials. Is yeah. that where you look? We're, we're actually staying away there. We, we've got a nice dead cat mm -hmm. bounce there, which I think is important because people are discounting the idea that the world is not going to end. However, 
China's not going to build another building for a decade here, right? So the idea that you're going to make a lot of money in these stocks longer term, I don't think they work. I'm glad they've bounced. That's important. Mm -hmm. But where we're playing on the cyclical side is we'd rather be in what we call the domestic cyclicals that depend on the health of the U.S. economy. Uh, a stock like an Ingersoll Rand is an example. That's more of a domestic cyclical. They've been taken down with China on the idea that China is going to pull the rest of us into a giant vortex. And we but don't think that's happening. This isn't just China. This is the whole emerging world. And American multinationals have placed a lot of, chi a lot of chips in markets outside of the U.S. Isn't that a problem for American stocks? And we've been waiting for a recovery there for a long time. Some of the big companies that are, you know, have exposure on, on an earnings basis uh, are going to be hurt. Certainly it's going to slow earnings. But there are other things that are doing better. Japan, Europe even in the U.S. You so, want to buy Japan and Europe? But their bets were we in like emerging Japan markets. They weren't in Japan and Europe. They were making big bets in China and Brazil. They have big expo Well, it depends on the company. So, you know, we're not buying companies with massive exposure to Brazil, as an example. We don't like Brazil. So you're buying the U.S., you're buying, uh, you're buying, you're buying Japan, and you're buying Europe? Yeah, we're staying, we're staying pretty much developed. We like the fact that EM has bounced here. We think that's also a good sign. Uh, but, but we think, you know, it's, it's way early to get too engaged there. Stephen, good to have you on the show today. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Stephen Off there joining us, Federated Investors.